وبركاته ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا يموتن الا ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار الحمد لله we praise Allah we seek his assistance and we seek his forgiveness and we seek refuge in Allah from the evil within ourselves and from our bad deeds whoever Allah guides there is none that can lead him astray and whoever is led astray then there is no guide for him I bear witness that no God has the right to be worshipped other than Allah he is alone and has no partners and I bear witness that Muhammad is his slave and his messenger O you who believe fear Allah as you ought to be feared and don't die except as Muslims O humanity fear your Lord who has created you from a single soul and created from it its mate and scattered from them to many men and women and fear Allah from you demand your mutual rights and don't cut off relations with the wombs that bore you indeed Allah is a raqib over you O you who believe fear Allah and say that which is correct in order that he may accept from you your deeds and forgive you of your sins and whoever obeys Allah and his messenger has achieved the greatest achievement amma ba'idu certainly the most truthful speech is the book of Allah and the finest guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the most evil of affairs are newly invented matters in this deen and every newly invented matter in this deen is a bid'ah and every bid'ah is a string and every string is in the hell fire <coughs> continuing with fiqh in the book al-adalat ar-radiyah li matni ad-durr al-bahiyah fi al-masail al-fiqhiyah by imam al-shawkani with the ta'liq of muhammad subhi hasan al-halaq we come to al-fasl al-thani tatahir al-najasat and the statement of al-shawkani rahimahullah wa yathar ma yatajas bi ghaslihi حتى لا يبقى لها عين ولا لون ولا ريح ولا طعم والنعل بالمسح والاستحالة مطهرة لعدم وجود الوصف المحكوم عليه وما لا يمكن غسله بالصب عليه او النسح منه حتى لا يبقى للنجاسة اثر والماء هو الاصل في التطهير لا يقوم غيره مقامه الا باذن من الشارع امام الشوكاني رحمه الله he says here uh, section number 2 uh, purifying the najasa purifying the najasa and a statement that you purify that which has been uh, najis or that which has uh, something nudges on it you purify it by washing it until nothing of the najasa remains no color no smell and no taste <laughs> and the shoes you remove the najasa by wiping them <coughs> and if something is najis and goes transforms i don't know how to say it transforms to something which is pure <coughs> then uh this uh transformation from what is najis to what is pure is the way that is purified or try to uh, make it a little clearer later inshallah and <clears throat> what isn't able to be uh, purified from those things that are najis by washing uh, by washing uh, that which is najis off of it then it's by pouring water on it or by taking off that which is najis 
until there is no more trace of that which is najis on on it. Water is the origin for cleaning, for making things pure. And nothing replaces water except that uh, we have permission from Allah. So here Imam al-Shawkani rahimahullah, uh, he shows us in general how to clean that which is najis. If something is najis, then you just simply take the water and wash it off until it's gone. When it comes to the shoes, you just wipe it off. Wipe your shoes on the ground. And we'll bring the hadith for this inshallah ta'ala. If something was najis and it transformed into something that is pure, then that is sufficient for it to be uh, purified. That which was najis. Those things that you can't just wash off, and we'll give the example like the earth or something, then you just pour water on it, or you take up that which is najis until nothing is remaining. And water is the origin, or this is what is used to purify things, and nothing can take that place except that you have a text for it. As far as the first point, that you purify that which is najis by washing it <coughs> with water, then we have covered these hadith, and we'll take a look at them again as the hadith of Imam Muslim, rahimahullah, uh, on the authority of Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu qala qala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam idha walagha al-kalbu fi ina'i ahadikum fal yuriqhu thumma al-yaghsilhu sab'a mirar wa'afiruhu al-thamina bit-turab as in one of the narrations of Sahih Muslim here the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says if a dog licks one of the containers of you then pour out its contents Contents and then wash it seven times, and the eighth time to wash it with dirt. So here the Messenger of Allah is showing us that to purify something that was najis is by washing it as He commanded us to wash in this case. And the same thing in the case of the next hadith: إذا أصاب ثوب إحدى كن الدم من الحيضة فلتقرصه ثم لتنضحه بماء ثم لتصلي فيه. Here the Messenger of Allah والسلام, he said, if one of you, referring to the women, you get some of your menstrual cycle blood on your clothing, then scratch it off, and then wash it with water, and then you can make salah in that clothing. So here the Messenger of Allah والسلام, and these two hadith, for uh, example, we see that uh, purifying that which is najis is by washing it off is by washing it off until as Imam Mashokani rahimullah he says until there's no more of that which was najis on it and then there's no color and then there's no smell and then there's no taste because if you have uh, some of it still remaining then it's najis so far as that thing is najis is remaining on the clothing or whatever and so long as you smell it it's still there so long as you smell something then it's still there and the same thing if you see the color of it or what have you <clears throat> so here we see from these hadith of the Messenger of Allah والسلام, that you clean that which is najis by water. When it comes to your shoes, like you're walking in the street and you step on some dog mess or whatever, to clean your shoes, then you simply wipe them as the Messenger of Allah والسلام, has showed us in this other hadith uh, collected by Abu Dawood and it's authentic where the Prophet وسلم, said, إِذَا جَاءَ أَحَدُكُمُ الْمَسْجِدَ فَلْيَقُلُبْنَ عَلَيْهِ وَلْيَنظُرْ فِيهِمَا فَإِنْ رَأَى خَبَثًا فَلْيَمْسَحُوا بِالْأَرْضِ ثُمَّ لِيُصَلِّي فِيهِمَا And this hadith is authentic. But the Messenger of Allah ﷺ said, If one of you comes to the masjid, then turn his shoes upside down so he can see the bottom, and look at them, and if he sees anything filthy that he had stepped on, then wipe it on the ground. And then he can make salat in those two shoes. So here the Messenger of Allah ﷺ shows if uh, it's on your shoes, then you wipe it on the ground. Some of the people uh, who let shaitan play with them, they're thinking sometimes, you know, you wipe it on the ground, you might then get all of it off and what have you and so on. The Messenger of Allah, والسلام, who does not speak on his own desires, he only speaks from revelation revealed to us. 
He told us how to clean this thing off that's nedges on the bottom of your shoe by wiping it in the ground. You wipe it in the ground as best you could to get off what you see on there. And then after that it's sufficient. As the Prophet ﷺ said, and then make salat in it. To show you that it's sufficient, the Prophet ﷺ makes salat in it. Somebody stepped in some dog mess, he just wiped his feet on the ground. So he think he got it off. Then he makes salat in it. And here the Messenger of Allah والسلام, is just confirming how pure your shoes really are when you wipe it on the ground. As he said, make salat in them. And how would the Messenger of Allah والسلام, command someone to make salat in shoes that he still has something nudges on it? So if something is on a person's shoe, then it's sufficient that he wipes it on the ground as the Messenger of Allah وسلم, has explained in that hadith. Uh, Imam al uh he gives the example on the next point, and that is, if something is najis, <coughs> and uh, then that najis thing transfers into something else that's pure, then that transformation is the purification of that thing that was najis. Imam al-Shawkani, rahimahullah, he had just given the example of khamar. And when I said the khamar, what was most authentic is that it wasn't najis. And we have mentioned that some of the people said that it was najis. Let's just make as if it was najis. Uh, alcohol, uh, uh, they can uh, make it go through a process and make it turn into vinegar. I don't know how you <laughs> work that out. Or like, you know, the example of peroxide, you leave it in the sun, it turns into water. And it's not peroxide anymore. On uh, these things, and then the people can use whatever they know that will transform. If something transforms from something that was nudges to something that was pure, then that thing that is nudges, it's no more purification of it because the simple transformation into something that is pure is sufficient. Why? Because now you're going to make the verdict on that thing that's pure. If peroxide is nudges, then when the sun hits it and it turns to water, when it's time to make the verdict on water, then there's no need to say, well, the water is nudges, let's clean the water. I mean, because once it's water, it's pure. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. It's the same like if you use animal manure for fertilizer in the last whole crop. Uh, fertilizer, I don't know when they use this uh, manure. And I don't know if it turns into another thing, but it has to turn into something else. Like the brother here mentioned, and uh, this is uh, for the soda drinkers. <laughs> they said all of the soda are produced, the carbonation is produced by alcohol. They have this alcohol, alcoholic process that carbonates soda or Kool-Aid or whatever. He said this, this amount of alcohol is small. And when it goes through the process of carbonation, then it's not alcoholic anymore. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. But here Imam al is trying to show once something transforms into something else, then it takes the verdict of that which it was transformed into. And this is like uh, some of the ulama, they say, if uh, these new metal alloys, maybe you got a ring, it's made out of a new metal alloy. This metal has gold in it. And the Messenger of Allah والسلام, prohibited the men from wearing gold. All right, can you wear that ring? When they said they put some gold in the mixture, the verdict is going to be, what is that metal? Whatever you say, I don't know the name of these new alloy metals or whatever, they say it's so, so-and-so. Okay, it's not gold anymore, even though whatever went into the, a gold may have went into the process. The verdict is going to be on that which is the final outcome or the result, or the end product, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. And this is the explanation of Imam al-Shawkani, rahimahullah. What, does, what is impossible to be washed, then you pour uh, water over it. And he takes this from the hadith that we had looked at before, where <clears throat> Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu qal, qama arabiyun fabala fil masjidi, فتناوله الناس فقال لهم النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم دعوه وهريقوا على وأهريقوا على بوله سجلا من ماء أو ذنوبا من ماء فإنما بعثتم ميسرين ولم تبعثوا معسرين 
And this authentic hadith of Al-Bukhari uh, Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu He says that a desert Arab stood up in the masjid And urinated So the people went to grab him And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said Leave him alone And just get a bucket of water And pour it over the urine we, indeed you only have been sent to make things easy and not to make things difficult here the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam uh, is showing uh, very clearly in this example that all right, somebody urinate on the ground you can't pick up you're not going to pick up the dirt and then wash it out and then put it back so this is what uh, Imam al-Shawkani is saying when you can't wash it out then what you do is pour water on top of it and this might be the case sometimes for the rug. The carpet is big. You can't just pick it up and wash it if it's a wall-to-wall carpet. So you pour water on it until it's pure as the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi showed us in this example. Or you take it off until there's no more najasa left. And here Imam Ashokani is showing uh, that something najas had fell on the rug. And uh, they were able to just scoop it up and take it away. When you looked at it, you didn't smell anything, nothing was left. Okay, then it's okay. So here Imam Ashokani, rahimahullah, is also showing if the thing is just taken off, if it's just that simple, that something is not just there and then you just pick it up, then it's okay. Uh, as uh, there's no remains of uh, that which was najis, so it's no need to purify that place. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. He said, water is the origin of cleaning or purifying that which uh, uh, something that just had uh, fallen onto it. And uh, we see this in the case where the Messenger of Allah, والسلام, he said, وَبُولُ الْجَارِيَةِ يُغْسَلُ And this is the hadith of Imam al-Bukhari, rahimahullah, with the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam, and we covered these hadith already. He said, the baby girl's urine, if it gets on you, then wash it with water. So here the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam, is showing that this is, this is the origin to wash it. And the same thing with the case of the dog licking a container, pour it out, and then wash it with water. The same way as we just saw, pour it on the ground. If there's something there just that falls on it, to pour water on it. So water is the origin and nothing replaces it except that you have some evidence. Like in the case that we had covered already with the issue of the shoes. You can say, okay, shoes you don't need water to purify if something gets on it. Why? The Messenger of Allah, he showed us that you just wipe it and it's pure. The same thing with the lady's lower garment. The Messenger of Allah had told them that the earth purifies itself. When the women were questioning the Prophet ﷺ about their garments being so long that they drag on the ground and they, uh, something that just might get on it, then the Messenger of Allah ﷺ said the rest, rest of the earth will purify that which was before it. Showing just dragging the lady's garment, is, if something gets on it, then the constant dragging is going to purify whatever had got on it. As the Messenger of Allah ﷺ had explained. So in general here, from the statement of Imam al we see that everything that was najis, if it's going to be purified, it has to be done with water, except that there's a text from the Qur'an or the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam to show otherwise. So this is just the end of this small chapter, uh, purifying that which uh, uh, has uh, something najis on it. And that is that you purify that which uh, was affected by something najis, by washing it with water until there's no more trace of that thing that is nudges. You don't see it, it's no smell, no color, no taste. If it's the shoes, then it's by wiping them on the ground. If something was nudges and then it transformed into something that was pure, then it takes the verdict of that which is pure and there's no need to purify that which is already pure by means of that transformation process. That which we don't have the ability to wash, then you just pour water on top of it, or you remove that which was nudges from it, or you remove that which was nudges from it, uh, as Imam Shokani rahimullah explained. 
And then he just ended by saying Water is the origin for purifying something And that nothing can take the place of water Except that you have a text From the Quran and the Sunnah And that's that chapter of purifying that which is najis uh, Before we continue to the next chapter if We just want to make sure that this point is clear Inshallah ta'ala and If there are any questions related Then we'll handle them now And if not then we can move on Inshallah We have one. Uh, the brothers and sisters in Asbury Park If the class was If this part was clear We can say so And if not If there are any questions We can entertain them now Inshallah ta'ala Otherwise we'll be moving on <laughs> The next chapter Al-Bab al You had a question? Al-Bab al-Qadha al Chapter number 3 Chapter relieving yourself. And the statement of Imam al Shawkani, Rahimahullah, Al al Mutakhali al Istitaru Hatta Yad Nuwa min al Ardi, Wal Bordu, Aw Dukhulu al Kanifi, Wa Turku al Kalam, Wal Malabasati Lima Lahu Hurma, Wa Tajan Nubu al Amkina, Alati Mana'an al Takhali Fiha Sharon. أو عرف وعدم الاستقبال والاستدبار للقبلة وعليه الاستجمار بثلاث أحجار طاهرة أو ما يقوم مقامها وتندب الاستعاذة عند عند الشروع والاستغفار والحمد بعد الفراغ. إمام الشوكاني رحمه الله. He says the chapter of relieving yourself. It's for the one who relieves himself to cover himself until he gets close to the ground and to be far away from the people or to enter into the bathroom area, the toilet area, to leave off talking and to leave off wearing any clothes, clothing that is sacred and to stay away from the places that Islam prohibits relieving yourself. Or he said the customs and that it's prohibited to face the Qibla or to turn your back to the Qibla when you're relieving yourself. And it's upon the people to use three, uh, pu- three pure stones or that which would take the place of the three stones. And it is recommended to seek refuge in Allah before you enter to relieve yourself or before you relieve yourself and to seek forgiveness and to praise Allah after you relieve yourself. Uh, <clears throat> we'll let the hadith inshallah ta'ala summarize this chapter for us inshallah and its importance uh, and uh, it's showing the comprehensive, comprehensiveness of this deen. As Imam al-Shawkani rahimullah he says it's on the one who is relieving himself to cover himself until he gets close to the ground. Uh, this is, uh, the shaykh explains, this is from the general uh, proof in this deen that people have to cover their awrah. And as for the hadith, man atal ghaid fal yastatur, this hadith is ba'if. So here the shaykh, he shows that from the general uh, hadith that uh, encourages us or shows that we have to cover our aura, then this is the same thing when you relieve yourself. That nothing changes, the aura of the person has to be covered. He says, until you get close to the ground. Meaning until you get to the, uh, or the toilet, where you're going to relieve yourself, that there's no need to take off your clothing until you get to the point where you're going to relieve yourself. And not to just expose your aura in front of the people like uh, the kuffar do. Just take down your pants. What are you doing, Akhi? I'm about to go to the bathroom. Okay, wait till you get in the bathroom and then take down your clothes. So here we see that the sheikh is just showing us that you don't take down your clothes in front of the people, but you wait until you're actually where you're going to relieve yourself. And then he said to stay far away from the people. And this is from the hadith of 
المغير بن شعبا النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم كان إذا ذهب المذهب أبعد and there are many hadith like this hadith of Abu Dawood and Al-Tirmidhi and it's authentic where Al-Mughir ibn Shu'bah he said that the messenger of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam whenever he wanted to relieve himself he would go very far and there are other hadith uh, that show that the messenger of Allah alayhi salatu salam used to go away from the people and this is of course before they had the uh, bathrooms and stuff and maybe the people in the woods if they have to relieve themselves then they would just walk away from the people far enough so no one could see him and then to relieve himself as we see from this hadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or to enter into the bathroom and we'll see a uh, uh, hadith related to this uh, inshallah ta'ala and here the shaykh is just showing if you enter into the bathroom then it's okay if you're not uh, far away from the people as you might be in the bathroom, somebody might be just outside the door of the bathroom or what have you, and this is still permissible as you're still covering yourself in the bathroom. And this is what the shaykh I wanted to mention, and we'll see the hadith related to that, inshallah ta'ala. And to leave off talking. And here the shaykh, rahimahullah, he's basing this on this hadith that says, لا يخرج الرجلان يضربان الغائط كاشفين عورتهما and this hadith has not been authentically reported on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where the hadith says uh, don't let two men uh, go to relieve themselves and they both are exposing their auras talking to one another yet uh, hadathan and they're talking to one another this hadith has not been authentically reported on the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Shaykh he says, uh, the one who is writing the footnotes he says, and I want you to know that it is not permissible to establish a verdict in Islam on a hadith that has not been authentically reported to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam what the Shaykh is saying is, if someone relieved himself and he was talking then it was permissible anyway and one of the Shaykh's <coughs> Muhammad Nasir al-Din al-Albani Allah He said I just want you to even think About the wording of the text To show it doesn't even pro- Prohibit you from talking anyway The text is saying Don't let two men Go to relieve themselves together And they both are exposing Their auras to each other While they're speaking The issue is exposing their auras To each other And the issue isn't talking so even if you were to reflect on this hadith It's just showing the issue Don't let two people say Oh you got to go to the bathroom Me too Let's go right here And then both of them are exposing their orders to one another Just talking Like nothing's happening And their orders are being exposed to one another So here even the hadith isn't even prohibiting the speech And because the hadith is da'if There's no verdict that stems from the weak hadith Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen it might be, and this uh, be, would be a quick summary, inshallah ta'ala, as we had a, a, a lecture one time lying on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi and dealing with the verdict that there's no verdict in Islam based on a hadith that has not been authentically reported to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi Some people say, no, you can use weak hadith, meaning ba'if hadith, or hadith that has not been authentically reported to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa the ulama who say you can use this They bring Conditions The first condition is That it's not extremely Unauthentic Meaning sometimes the hadith is unauthentic Not authentic because A person in the chain His memory is a little faulty He just wasn't high power Sometimes the hadith Is not authentic because Somebody was just a straight out liar so and so is a liar He was the one that reported it Okay the one that's a liar Isn't going to be like The student Who just didn't have A perfect memory So his memory was faulty But you can say He was basically A trustworthy brother Good brother On the deed And that level Of uh, hadith That's not authentic Is not going to be the same As a fabricating liar One who just invents lies On the messenger of Allah Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam As usually the people Of deviants do they invent hadith in order to support the deviance that they are upon. As we have given the example 
and some of the Americans uh, from New York had went to the city called Puba in Senegal and they all went over there to learn Quran and they have a very big masjid over there with a grave in it and they're Sufis and the Sufi sheikh of the village he made a hadith he said the Prophet said that 1400 years from now in a city called Puba there will be a man <laughs> follow him and he's talking about himself so here uh, these hadith they have uh, the people who say that you can use them they say that you have to know that it's not extremely authentic is there any among, amongst us that can look in the chain of the hadith to know was there a liar in it or was the person's memory a little faulty or what was the case we don't know it in the first place to say I'm going to use this daif hadith instead of that one and this will show that the only people that would even be able to be on that level to determine which ones we would use and which ones we weren't, wouldn't use would be the people of knowledge and not the every ordinary day, a day Muslim. The other condition that they make is that the hadith and that which established by the hadith that has not been authentically reported to the Prophet Sallallahu that it falls under something that has already been established in this deen. It falls under something that has already been established in this deen. Meaning that the hadith that has not been authentically reported on the Prophet ﷺ doesn't bring something new. It brings something that was already uh, in the deen of Islam. For example, as we're going to cover this point of seeking refuge in Allah when you enter to the bathroom. It's been established by the Messenger of Allah ﷺ, an authentic hadith, and we'll bring the narrations. Maybe there's an unauthentic narration that where you seek refuge in Allah, but you do it another way. For example, in this case, the ulama say, so long as you have something that's authentic, why in the world are you going to go to what's unauthentic? It's in the same case. For example, something going into the bathroom. The only way you can use a hadith that's not authentically reported on the Prophet ﷺ for entering into the bathroom is if you already have one that's sahih for entering into the bathroom. If you have one that's sahih already, what do you need the one that's not been authentically reported on the Prophet ﷺ? The other one is that these unauthentic hadith can be used in what they call fadal al-a'mal, meaning virtuous deeds. That's no verdict. Something that would encourage you to be nicer to your wife or would encourage you to make more salat in the masjid or would uh, encourage you to stay away from fornication or something. Something that's not establishing a verdict that there's just an encouragement to do something or a discouragement like discourage you from staying away from fornication. Discourage you to stay away from fornication. Discourage you from staying away from... Discourage you from uh, zina. Not discourage you from staying away. From <laughs> discouraging you from zina. Committing zina. Discouraging you from of uh, using riba or like this uh, <clears throat> and uh, this is for those people who say that and really as the ulama on that which is the truth and which makes more sense to anyone is isn't that which is authentic sufficient as Imam Muslim rahimahullah he says what is authentic is sufficient and how could it not be when Allah says this day I've completed for you your deen that which has been authentically reported to the Prophet ﷺ, and that which we have in the Quran which makes up the completion of the deen isn't that sufficient? and if it's sufficient why do we have to bring something that's not from the deen not authentically reported to the Prophet ﷺ, when Allah sent us down that which is already sufficient from this deen of Al-Islam uh, so here this point that Imam Shokani says that there's no speaking when you're in the bathroom there's nothing to support this and he says uh, not wearing any clothing that you had a question for going into that and not wearing any clothing that's sacred and we'll explain that inshallah yes No, the Messenger of Allah ﷺ, 
كرهت وان اذكر الله الا على طهر او كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم من this hadith in Sahih Muslim he says that I dislike uh, remembering Allah except when I'm in a state of purification so this is the remembrance of Allah not that you go in the bathroom and just start saying subhanallah 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 or you just start reciting the beautiful names of Allah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Al-Malak Al-Quddus and you just wait till you get in the bathroom to do that no this is the same of the message of Allah I dislike remembering Allah except when I'm in a state of purification and we know the hadith of, the hadith of Aisha ta'ala anha, where she said Kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yadkuru Allah ala kulli ahyan that the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa used to remember Allah all the time all the time so this even shows that remembering Allah all the time and we're going to see when we enter the bathroom and leave the bathroom the statement of the message of Allah alayhi wa sallam, and the remembrance of Allah when we do that Entering the bathroom with that which uh, is sacred, the people they try to say that can the Nabi Sallam Ida Dakhal al Khala Yanzi U Khatimahu. And this has not been authentically reported to the Prophet Sallam where it says when he used to enter the bathroom to relieve himself, then he used to take off his ring. And we know the ring of the Messenger of Allah Sallam used to have Muhammad Rasulullah. And they used to say he used to take it off. But the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu salam uh, this hadith has not been authentically reported on him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best <coughs> the next point that Imam al brings is to stay away from the places that this deen prohibits us from relieving ourselves in and this is as we see in the case of the hadith of Sahih Muslim where the messenger of Allah sallallahu said ittaqu la'anayni قالوا ومن لا عاناني يا رسول الله قال الذي يتخلى في طريق الناس أو في ظلهم. and this hadith the messenger of Allah عليه الصلاة والسلام says stay away from the two things that are cursed. they said and what are these two things that are cursed يا رسول الله he said the one who reveals relieves himself in the pathway of the people or in their shade. so here the messenger of Allah عليه الصلاة والسلام prohibits someone like uh, to just go stand out on the street on the sidewalk and then just to relieve yourself and the pathway of the people mm-hmm. <coughs> and nowadays alhamdulillah even the kuffar they make the dogs go to the side and not to relieve themselves in the pathway of the people or, or in their shade a lot of times you know when you go to the park people are under, everybody's trying to get a tree to get some shade and on these areas where the people take to uh, have shade from the sun, then the Messenger of Allah والسلام, prohibit us from relieving ourselves in that area. And maybe we don't see it so much as we don't live in a hot climate, but you can imagine in the desert and the importance of shade. And the Messenger of Allah والسلام, prohibited the people from relieving themselves there so that the people can benefit from the shade. The next uh, hadith we see from the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam, from uh, Jabir radiallahu anhu and this is also from Sahih Muslim أَنَّهُ نَهَا أَنْ يُبَالَ فِي الْمَاءِ الرَّاكِبِ that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasalam, prohibited to urinate in still water and this is uh, as uh, the people know in the olden days when they used to keep their water in a bucket and then they used to use that excuse me in a barrel and then they would dip a pot in or whatever to use the water as they needed from that barrel. The Messenger of Allah والسلام, prohibited that this like this type of still water that you just go urinate in the water that the people use. So here we see that the Messenger of Allah والسلام, have prohibited urinating in the water and this is also one of the places where we have been prohibited from relieving ourselves. River, rivers are still? Rivers move. Ponds, uh, the brother's saying, does that mean a pond and I guess a well? Any of the water that's still, the Messenger of Allah, alayhi salatu prohibited us 
And I hope that this falls in that category, inshallah. The water and where? The toilet bowl is still? No. Nah. Toilet. Alright. It's movable water. That's the water that's moving. That place is made just for that. The water is there. It's turning around every time you use it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. But this is what the toilet is for. It's for that. As opposed to the other water. Like if somebody run the bathtub water, you say, well, that's still water just like the toilet. Let me pee in there. I'm going to take your bath. This is what the Muslim of Allah is prohibiting. But I look at the, the pond as being maybe still, but yeah, it can purify itself because of the big body of water. I mean, you're in a big body of water. And you're going to change the smell of the Yeah, this isn't an issue of is, it, uh, uh, is the pond going to remain pure or not from people urinating in it, urinating in it. The issue is you've been prohibited from urinating in it. So whether it's going to affect it or not going to affect it, it's still been prohibited from doing that. Process of himself. He said, or the customs. If something from the customs of the people have prohibited the people from urinating in a place to do that, and we know that everything has to be established by evidences from the Book of Allah, the Sunnah of His Messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam. He went to add, and to not to face the Qibla or to put your back to the Qibla when you're relieving yourself. And this is from the hadith of Al-Bukhari, a Muslim, and the Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qal, إِذَا تَيْتُمُ الْغَائِطَ فَلَا تَسْتَقْبِلُوا الْقِبْلَةَ وَلَا تَسْتَدْبِرُوهَا وَلَاكِنْ شَرِّقُوا أَوْ غَرِّبُوا Here, the Messenger of Allah, alayhi salatu wa sallam, he said, if one of you goes to relieve himself, then don't face the Qibla and don't put your back towards it. Rather, go to the east or to the west. Uh, here the messenger of Allah والسلام, is making it clear don't put your backs to the Qibla in our case and we were mentioning this yesterday our case as the Prophet ﷺ said rather go face the east or face the west if we face the east we're going to be facing the Qibla here the messenger of Allah والسلام, was speaking to the people when they were in Medina and if we were speaking to the people in New Jersey and New York area we're going to say when you relieve yourself, don't face the Qibla, rather face the north or the south. And this is understanding the hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Abu Ayyub, he said that, uh, this is the companion of the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wa sallam, he said, when we went to the Sham area, and this is just north of the Arabian Peninsula, he said that we found them having these toilets. And they were built facing the Qibla. So we turned them away from that. <coughs> uh, uh, we used to turn ourselves away uh, from the Qibla and we used to seek Allah's forgiveness. This is if you uh, have the toilet, say the toilet is facing the Qibla. Or the toilet is going to have your back facing the Qibla. Don't sit straight on the toilet, sit to the side of it. So that you don't face the Qibla and seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness as his companion radiallahu ta'ala anhu said that they used to do. <coughs> and it's for the person who relieving himself to use three uh, pure stones. And this is from the hadith of Imam Muslim <coughs> on the authority of Salman radiallahu anhu qala qila lahu قَدْ عَلَّمَكُمْ نَبِيُّكُمْ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ حَتَّى الْخَرَاءَ قَالْ فَقَالَ أَجَلْ لَقَدْ نَهَانَا أَنْ نَسْتَقْبِلَ الْقِبْلَةَ لِغَائِطٍ أَوْ بَوْلٍ أَوْ أَنْ نَسْتَنْجِيَ بِالْيَمِينِ أَوْ أَنْ نَسْتَنْجِيَ بِأَقَلِّ مِنْ ثَلَاثَةِ أَحْجَارِ أَوْ أَنْ نَسْتَنْجِيَ بِرَجِيعٍ أَوْ بِعَظْمٍ Salman radiallahu ta'ala anhu he narrates in this hadith when it was said to him your prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam teaches you everything even how to go to the bathroom he said of course and this is to show how comprehensive this deen is 
and how the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi as we see in some narrations, uh, teaches us like a father teaches his son how to do everything, walhamdulillah, and even how to go to the bathroom. And then Salman he went on to explain that the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam, prohibited us from facing the qibla if we defecated or if we ur- urinated. And he prohibited us from using our right hands when we wipe ourselves. And he prohibited us from using less than three stones from purifying ourselves. And he prohibited us from using dung and from using bones in order to purify ourselves. So here we see from this hadith of the Messenger of Allah, alayhi salatu wasalam, uh, the issue of using three stones or more to purify yourself. And Imam Ashokani, rahimahullah, he said, or that, uh, <coughs> or that which will take the place of uh, of the three stones. And here uh, he says that we understand that which would take the place of three stones is permissible, just like the three stones are. This is as the Messenger of Allah والسلام, prohibited them from using bones and this dung. Then, just like the Prophet ﷺ prohibited those other things that he prohibited, show that the other things, if they're pure and they can take the place of the stones like uh, toilet paper or napkins or what have you, then they'll take the place of it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Imam al Shokani says, and to, it is recommended to seek refuge in Allah. Upon uh, relieving, beginning to relieve yourself or entering into the bathroom. And this is from the hadith of Al Bukhari and Muslim. Kana Nabi Sallam Ida Dakhal al Khala Kala Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al Khayr. The hadith of Anas radiallahu anhu where he said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if he entered the place to relieve himself, then he would say, Oh Allah, indeed I seek refuge in you from the Khubsi wal Khaba'if. They say what is meant by this, ulama, they say, the male and the female shayateen. So here we see from this hadith that the Messenger of Allah used to seek refuge in Allah when he be, uh, entered the place to relieve himself. <coughs> uh, and some of the brothers uh, had questions in the past. Do you say that when you get in the bathroom or do you say that when you get to the toilet area? Here, uh, the place where you relieve yourself at. As we know that if a person was in the woods, maybe he didn't have a bathroom, but where he's going to plant his two feet to take care of his business, this area he has to make the statement that the Messenger of Allah used to make by seeking refuge in Allah from the khubti wal khaba'i. And he says to seek forgiveness and to praise Allah after you finish. And this is from the hadith of Abu Dawood in a tirmidhi uh, on Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha anna nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kana idha kharaja min al-ghaifi qala ghufranaka and this hadith is authentic where Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha she said that when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came out from relieving himself he would say ghufranaka or uh, saying oh Allah I seek your forgiveness as far as praising Allah when you finish then this was based on a hadith that has not been authentically reported on the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam and that is the statement Alhamdulillah ladhi azhaba anni al-adha wa'afani this hadith uh, all praise is due to Allah who has removed from me this harm and has given me general well good well-being this hadith has not been authentically reported on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wasallam so as far as the shaykh statement that we seek forgiveness and we praise Allah when we finish. What has been authentically reported on the Prophet Wasallam is seeking forgiveness and not the praising of Allah wa Ta'ala and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala knows best. So Imam al-Shawkani rahimahullah, we see that he says in this chapter of relieving yourself that the one who relieves himself should cover his aura until he's just about to relieve himself. And he should stay far away from the people not to be in the presence of the people Unless he's in the bathroom where it's closed. And he says, and you should leave off talking and wearing something that's sacred. Like something that has the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on it or something like that. Or he said that there's no evidence authentically reported on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa to establish either of these two points. 
and to stay away from the places that Islam prohibits us from relieving ourselves. And we brought the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu that prohibits us from relieving ourselves in the pathway of the people and in their shade and from relieving ourselves in still water. And it is uh, prohibited from uh, facing the Qibla and putting our backs to the Qibla when we relieve ourselves. And to use three stones that are clean or that which would take the place of three stones after we have relieved ourselves to wipe ourselves clean. And it is recommended to seek refuge in Allah upon entering the bathroom and then to seek Allah's forgiveness afterwards and for praising Allah afterwards that nothing has been authentically reported on the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam wa sallam. And this is what we wanted to offer today. Walhamdulillah. Wa subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdika. Shadu an la ilaha illa anta. Astaghfiruka wa atubi ilayk. I don't know if there were any questions uh, remaining. Or is everything clear, inshallah ta'ala. Uh. I got one question. Yes. Uh, the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, shake uh, anybody's hand while he's in a, uh, not, not in Doha. Not in Pyrrhic. Uh, how do we do? Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. I don't know. Inshallah. Said that the Prophet ﷺ ever shake somebody's hand when he wasn't in the state of wudu. I don't know. I've, I've never come across this issue or heard anybody speak about this before. I don't know if somebody knows something. We had dealt with this before And I thought that the brother was mentioning specifically The shaking of the hands Otherwise uh, this point about giving the salam Then we had already mentioned this Thank you Thank you Thank you Thank you Thank you Thank you Yeah, uh, I didn't entertain this issue and uh, sometimes I run from the issues that uh, aren't an issue sometimes if you can get away from it as Imam al-Shawkani he didn't mention it but the brother is just asking uh, as uh, it has been authentically reported on Abdullah ibn Umar that the Messenger of Allah والسلام, was in the house relieving himself uh, with his back facing the Qibla so some of the uh, ulama, they tried to, to take a look at this hadith and then the hadith of being prohibited from facing the qibla and to say that if you're inside in a bathroom and you face the qibla or your back towards it, then it's okay, inshallah ta'ala. The Prophet ﷺ did it. And <clears throat> if you're outside, then make sure that you don't face the qibla. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best and this is why we quoted the statement of uh, Abu Ayyub Al-Ansari radiallahu anhu He said that we found the, the toilets already stationary there And they were facing the Qibla So we used to just turn to the side and seek Allah's forgiveness So even this shows that it's still uh, the practice to try to stay away from facing the Qibla And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best uh, Yes. Now, is there a hadith that uh, states making two rakahs after you relieve yourself? I don't know of a hadith that says that, but maybe the closest thing to it is the hadith of Bilal ibn Rabah radiallahu ta'ala anhu who said that he never broke his wudu at any time during the day or the night. Except that he made a wudu after it and made turakat after it. Because of this, the Prophet ﷺ said that he was uh, amongst the people of Jannah. Was the Allah Almighty? Um, what 
He probably wanted to accept Islam, but you wouldn't give him the shahada. Because if he wants the whole salam, then it means he wants to be a Muslim to get the whole salam like the Muslim. He had a cigarette in his mouth. That's why he gave him a lady. Uh, yeah. No, I'm saying you just tell him. Why did you not give him the whole salam? He was a Muslim. From the Salaf way, he said he gave the whole salam. No, the Prophet Sallallahu the brother is working by the hadith of the Muslim of Allah alayhi salatu salam that when you meet the Jew Ahl al-Kitab in the street and they greet you then say wa alayhi and and Uh, yeah, we're aware of that. And uh, it's very clear from the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, don't begin them with the salam. And if they greet you, then say, wa alaykum. I mean, this is clear, sahih, from the Messenger of Allah, alayhi salatu salam. And this is why... This is the this this is the hadith right there that says wa alaikum. No problem, it's already been checked and it says ahl al kitab and this is the. We'll bring those narrations to the people, inshallah ta'ala, and uh, make it. Otherwise, we're very clear of those narrations. And this hadith of the Messenger of Allah, alayhi salatu wasalam, if anybody says, wa alaykum to him, that is perfectly okay. And this hadith of the Messenger of Allah, alayhi salatu wasalam, and that's why you find, if you want to know why the people do it, then this is why the people do it, because of this hadith of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. We'll sit down and discuss that, inshallah ta'ala. Let me have one more thing. I found that brothers are doing this with Farhan no, we looked at the Masala and we're aware that some of the ulama that this is the position that they have gone with and we are also aware that other of the ulama they don't see this position and because of this, this is the way we have saw it, and this is the way we put it, put it out, and this is why you see the people doing it, and it shouldn't be surprising. It's surprising, because the term salad means that we follow the text. And so if you don't understand a verse of the Quran, or understand a hadith of the Prophet, it's not. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But our scholars that we agree on, we look to see what the salad was doing. And I, in those narrations of the Mufa, brings all the narrations of salad, the Sahaba, and Salah. We'll take another look, inshallah. We'll think about it. I don't know if there were any other questions related to thoughts.
Yeah. Yeah, we're going to get to that chapter, inshallah. Uh, Alhamdulillah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.